All right, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike. Um, this is going to be my reviews on the Marvel and Independent books I picked up on 615 2021. Um, first up from Boom Studios, we have Berserker, done by Keanu Reeves and Matt Kent. This is specifically written by uh, Keanu Reeves. It's the third issue into the series. Um, this is probably my least favorite of the week. It was still a good comic, but um, compared to everything else, it was just meh. Um, this is more into his origin story. I'm going to show you all random art. Um, I mean, overall, it was a good issue. It's, all, it's following the last you know, steps that we saw in the last comic, and it's just following Berserker, and he's, it, it's more like on his realization that he's not just a tool anymore, that, is, uh, that he was born and bred to be, and now he's starting to question things with his mom. And... Um, you know he's looking for this this acceptance from his father you know he keeps asking if he's if he's doing a good job um, he's going to his mother asking you know philosophical questions like what am I who am I you know what am I here for those kind of things you know he's starting to get his own his own conscience um, there is like something in this issue that sets up like you know when, when you don't give you know somebody with little information to less information and there there's there's like a couple scenes where he's like, hey, did I do good, Dad? And his dad's like, oh, God, yeah, yeah, you did real good, you know, maybe too good, you know. Um, I'll show you some bloody gore goriness. Um, my major complaint with this, with the series in general and, um, you know, specifically with this issue, I was kind of hoping we get it in this issue, but we still don't have like an antagonist, a villain. Um, an evil presence, you know, what's this guy scared of, what, what's, I mean, right now he's just working for the government, we're going, we're trying to figure out his past, you know, um, what makes him immortal, that's what the government's after. As far as, you know, what's, what's the threat in the book, I mean, life right now is all we got, we don't, we don't know, so I'm hoping sooner or later there will be some kind of antagonist, some kind of, you know, villainous force, uh, uh, anti-government, uh, you know, something. Um, for me, that's the only thing that this book is missing, you know, who, who is he going up against? You know, yes, he's immortal, but, I mean, that's, it's more of a sad story unless he's got somebody to go up against immortally-wise, you know, and then it's something fun, but honestly, it's, it's kind of like a vampire tale, you know, living forever, everyone dies around you, mm -hmm. you know, if that's where the story continues, fun, you know. <laughs> um, but hopefully we get a villain or antagonist or something for this guy to go up against, or because right now it's just all like, you know, it's, a, it's this battle with his memories. Um, next up from Boom Studios, we have The Mini Deaths of Layla Starr, done by Ram B, art by Felipe. Um, let me get his name right. It just says uh, Felipe Andretti. Um, this was a great issue. If y'all don't know, this is a... Uh, I think it's a five issue series and it's it follows uh, the character or the you know of death um, the actual persona of death like the Grim Reaper and that's who Layla Starr is um, she has been told by the gods that her job is no longer needed there's a child that's going to be born and he's been granted with immortality and he's going to share it with the world so no more death so Layla Starr is out of death she is granted access to become uh, like a human and live with the mortals and it is set in like a, a Hindu setting with Hindu gods, you know, stuff like that. And um, there is reincarnation. So, of course, Layla Starr, you know, in the first series, she ends up meeting the boy who brings immortality as an infant. And she goes there trying to kill him, you know, trying to get her job back, death. And she can't do it. It's a little baby. And um, she ends up dying in that issue gets reincarnated, meets the guy again, doesn't recognize him because it's been years past, ends up dying again, and now we're at the third setting of, of Layla Starr. And this one, she's at a club, she's just having fun. She does end up running into the boy, and again, he's a lot older, and I think 18 years have passed by this time, and um, she doesn't recognize him again. At this point, we do run into Darius, which is the young boy's name, and um, at this time, he's already focused, he's already faced death. I think we saw that in the second issue. And in this one, he's facing the loss of love. His girlfriend is breaking up with him, and um, 
they go into some backstories on why you know him and his girlfriend were this connection uh, on you know during his life and stuff. And then he ends up running to Layla, and they start talking about you know life and relationships. And he has a bigger understanding of it after this breakup. Um, the whole I would like to point out the whole um, the whole story is kind of told through the eyes of the cigarette. Um, another thing I like to add is very abstract art, and I love it. It fits this comic perfectly. Normally, it would be an art that I would be into, but I mean, it, it's just amazing, and it fits. It, it flows really well. Every panel is is just fantastic and amazing. The use of colors, um, the pencil the pencil shading is really nice. Um, but it really goes into like you know, how she's living her life and where his life's going. He's having this pivotal point in his life, and we're getting to that what, where he's going to gain the immortality, you know, catch or whatever. We're not there yet, so we're starting to see the pieces fit in, into place. And sure enough, at the end of this one, she ends up dying again, and, and the talks of the last page, she's going to be resurrected 18 years into Darius's future. So he should be like in his 40s by the time we see him again. Um, overall, it was a really good read. I mean, I can't stress it enough. If you're not reading the Mini Desolate Star, um, you're missing out. It's a really good book. Uh, it's one of my top picks when it comes out. It's one of the books I most look forward to reading. And just like those other weeks, it didn't disappoint. Um, next up, we have the Silver Coin from Image. Issue number three. This one is written by Ed Brisson and looks like art is done by Michael Walsh. I'll give you a little cover shot. Um, Silver Coin is an anthology story. Each one is a different story that follows the coin. It is a horror setup style. This one we're following a, a three groups. Uh, three groups. We're following a group of three individuals. It's a woman and two guys, and they're breaking into a firefighter's house. I would like to point out, I think this is a callback to the first issue when the firefighter found the first silver coin at the end of the first issue. I'm hoping it is because that would kind of tie the series in together a little more. But they're robbing a fireman's house in the midst of uh, breaking in. They end up accidentally kill the gentleman. Uh, they, sca they scare him literally to death. Um, they go and proceed, you know, robbing the house and everything. They're not really bothered by him dying. It, for them, it makes it easier. Um, they end up hiding the evidence, they, they end up burning down the house, and then they're on the run. As they're on the run, um, it comes across that the girl did find the silver coin in the house, and um, all of a sudden she is being possessed by it. At the same time, they are being chased by the cops. Somehow the cops have found out that, um, you know, that they robbed the house or whatever. And um, at this point, there's a lot of action, there's a, a crash scene, a chase scene. Um, the two other guys don't really make it, um, and at this point the girl is still being possessed. She's being chased by the police, she's running through the woods, it's this whole like horror setup where she kind of disappears in the run, I mean in the forest, and, and uh, the cops left lost sight of her and all of a sudden she comes back and she's not that little girl that she saw, she's kind of like this, this crazy animal and she ends up, you know, killing the two cops, very brutally style. Um, one of them, I think she, she rips into his neck with her teeth, and, um, and there is some chomp chomp um, scenery there. Eventually the coin does lead her in, to the middle of the forest, um, where the end of the episode ends. I will tell you that she does find a house in the middle of the woods, and that it's kind of too spoilery for me to reveal. Um, at that point it does lead into the next issue and the next issue looks like it's going to have a futuristic setting. Um, it looks like it takes place in 2467 so that will be interesting. Um, I mean a great read especially if you're any kind of horror fan. Um, this series is great. Um, if you ever watched the ABC's of Death or anything like that, it's just like that. Um, it, it is such a good story so far, and I can't wait for the next issue. This is another one that I look forward to every time it drops. And those two comics were like my top comics of that week. Um, they're just those two issues are, are killing it. Um, next up from from Marvel, yes, Marvel. We have Aliens number four and another issue that is just killing it. I love this series by far. This is probably one of my favorite Xenomorph comics to date. 
they're just doing it so right. The art in it is amazing. The story is good. I will say in this issue, they do point out, they, they kind of point out a main series flaw with aliens in general, and I'll get to that. But um, for those of y'all don't know, this is following, um, I think his name is Captain Hicks. Don't kill me on the name. But, um, and I would like to point out that right here, I think we get something new. Like, I think that's the first time we've ever seen an alien eat somebody or show them eating or... You know, as far as my recollection, I've never seen an alien eat, but they are, they, they do put some crunch, slurp, and, you know, no sound effects in there, so I have to imagine he's eating. And I will say in all alien movies, I've never seen that before. You know, we know they kill, and they kill with their mouth, but we've never seen them, like, gurgle some blood or, or chomp on someone's face, you know. So that, that was kind of new. Um, but overall, back to the story, sorry. Overall, we're following a... Hicks, and at this point he's with Bishop. Uh, Bishop was found in the facility and he's been by himself. Um, Hicks has been tasked by the Wayland Corporation, some, uh, a corporation that he worked for previously has been retired and has been reactivated to go save this, this space station that turns out to be like a weapons testing facility for the Wayland Corporation. Um, the reason he is tasked to go do this is because his son unknowingly like a right-wing activist, tried to go and um, he tried to go like free some animals that he thought were on the space station, you know, like being eco-friendly, that type of thing. And he wasn't aware that it was full of xenomorph killing machines. Um, so that's his task. He's got a two-task mission. He's, he's trying to get this, this specimen that, that Wayland Corporation wants back, the alpha specimen, and he's also tasked with finding his son on a personal mission. And so we're picking up the pieces. He's, you know, he's traveling with Bishop and a couple other of the, like I think one other colonial marine who's still alive at this time, and um, one of his son's crew that was with his son when they broke into the facility. Just some random art, but um, at this point they're just they're making it through. They're they're trying to find the nest because they know that's where all the xenomorphs will have um, Danny and the rest. They do find poor Danny, and unfortunately, he's already been face tugged. His dad, at this point, knows what's going on and instantly wants to, you know, give him some peace, and he tries killing him. Um, at this point, you know, we get we get Bishop, and he's Bishop is trying to tell him like, "Hey, man, uh, uh, this can't happen. For one, I can't let you hurt a human, you know, due to my Android programming, and." Second off, you know, my Wayland programming won't let you, you know, kill one of the specimens that they're, you know, spending billions of dollars on. Um, so they kind of make a half half and they make a, de uh, you know, a decision on taking Danny while he's face hugged back to the ship and they're going to use him as one of the specimens. Um, at this time, all the xenomorphs are activated. During this time, they do point out one of the story plots. And um, as they were finding out, as they're connecting with uh, Bishop, they do throw out a question, and it's one of the questions I've always had watching the series. But um, they ask Bishop how he's managed to, you know, be alive, living on this on the space station with all these xenomorphs running around, and an alpha, and I think a queen, and he's still alive. And they're like, oh, he's like, oh, I'm synthetic, I'm an android. They don't really mess with me unless I try and attack one of them, and then they'll swarm on me. So that's my question, you know, in all these alien series, and I know it's an easy answer, but why haven't, you know, why didn't they just send a group of androids, you know, and just have them go in, get the specimen, you know, all sneaky android-like, unseen by the xenomorphs, and have them, you know, walk it out, you know, they, as long as they don't attack anybody, you know, they won't get attacked, so and I thought that was weird that the writers put that in here, like it's such a big flaw in the, in the uh, anyways. I still love aliens. Um, so we, the rest of the book, once they do get Danny and they're trying to make it back to the ship, um, it, it's all out like, you know, alien, you know, the aliens are aware that they're in the nest now and the queen and the alpha has set them loose to go kill, you know, Hicks and Bishop and the other crew. The rest of the story is basically this all out, you know, them trying to rush, make it back to the, um, you know, make it back to the, the their spacecraft so they can leave the space station. Um, I will say, and I, and I am going to show this as spoilers, if you have not read this yet and you plan to, 
but at the very end of this issue, um, we do finally get to see, I'm assuming, what Alpha looks like, and it did not disappoint. He has these like bull-like appendages on his head. He has these really over-exaggerated claws, like he's about to do something with the claw, you know, insert joke there, ha <laughs> ha! Um, but, I mean, overall it was just a great issue. I wish this would have been the sequel to Aliens. Um, I think in July we might be getting a comic book sequel to Aliens or something like that. But man, this is such a great Xenomorph series. Um, Disney is honestly killing it with the the Fox Alien franchise. So far, in my opinion, I can't wait to see like a live format, what they're going to do. They're in talks of like a show or something like that. Um, Alright, last but not least, this was my favorite comic of the week by far for many reasons. But X-Men Demon Days... Mariako number one by Preach Momoko. Um, this was just an amazing read. It was so fun. It was engaging. Um, the art, of course, is just breathtaking. It's Peach Momoko. Um, I can't go into it enough. It was such a great read. If y'all are not picking this up, this is the number one issue. The other one is kind of like its own side story. This one is continuing. There will be a three part to it. So this is the issue to get. Um, it's such a great read, especially if you like the Marvel Universe. And what it does is she takes Marvel characters and she throws them into this Japanese folklore. So you don't need to know anything about those Marvel characters as long as you like their look, you know, you know, kind of their main, you know, that Hulk smashes kind of thing. That's what she's taken and done with this. It's basically a fairy tale. It's set up around uh, Kurosaka Mountain, and this one is, uh, again, we're at Kurosaka Mountain. It's a little bit more into the future. We are following a girl named Morocco, and Morocco's having these dreams about the Oni, and specifically Oni children. And um, <clears throat> she keeps having these dreams, and she's waking up from the dreams, and she doesn't know why she's having these, these Oni-enforced dreams. Um, we do cut to the scene right here, and she's having a bad day at school with a bully. This bully ends up cutting her hair. Um, and she goes, she flips on the guy. I mean, she loved her hair and, and she literally takes a box cutter and, and everybody in her class thought Mariaka was going to kill this guy. Um, she does end up just scaring him, you know, right next to his head kind of thing, but still it was kind of like, you know, for a middle school class, it was, it was kind of brutal. Um, she makes it home and, and they find out about her, you know, what happened at school. At home, we do get to run into Black Widow, and in this story, Black Widow is a is like Mariako's housekeeper. Um, she goes to sleep again, and again, she has dreams of Oni. Um, after this dream setting, uh, she wakes up and she goes to her granny in this household. She lives with her granny and the Black Widow housekeeper. Um, so. She's explaining to Granny about her dreams and the Oni, and at this time we also see that Black Widow is, is kind of like a, a double agent as well in the story. Um, Miriako has revealed that she's having these dreams and something it's, it's set Black Widow in motion. Um, Granny is also being set in motion because she's like, Oh dear, it's time to tell you the secret! And, and basically, uh, Granny takes her into this back room and tells her, Hey, you're not really a human. I found you on Kurosaka Mountain, and you are an Oni child. Um, I found you with your mother. She, she was dead. And I found you in some bushes, and I took you home, adopted you, and I kept it secret so I could keep you safe and, you know, sound, and that you'd have a normal, perfect life. And I didn't want you to know that you were an Oni child. Um... Mariaka finds this, she's a little surprised, you know, she's not hurt or anything, um, she's listening to everything. We do find out that Granny's a little bit of a witch and she has hidden this key that is protecting um, a sword and a jaw plate that came from her mother, that was found with her mother, that is destined to be hers. Um, at this time it's also revealed that Black Widow, what her secret agent dealings is, is uh, she's working with an Oni warlord that is after Oni in general and the only warlord is, is like using their blood to gain kind of, he thinks he's gaining immortality or she thinks she's gaining immortality but it's kind of like a misconception at this time black widow's telling mariako like like i'm supposed to betray your family i'm supposed to take you to this only warlord so he can kill you and take your blood but 
I grew up with you and they go into this whole like they, they do a whole bunch of flashbacks of how they grew up together and she's just been living with Mary Aku her whole life and at this point Black Widow tells her you know I'm, I'm gonna betray the Oni Warlord and my faith is to you at this time we do see like an Oni Warlord ninja or an assassin that pops up I don't know who that Marvel character is but I assume it's somebody y'all might know I'm out of touch with Marvel I want to say it might be Nightcrawler but I'm not sure um, that would be my guess, but I know it's wrong. Um, but anyways, the assassin shows up, you know, saying, hey, you betrayed the warlord, you know, now you gotta die. Black Widow does defend herself, the, the, the assassin ends up, you know, disappearing in smoke, and, and um, you know, basically, <clears throat> you know, um, after that, Granny, Miriaku goes with Granny and, and Granny kind of fills her in from, from the rest of the conversation that she was interrupted in. She does give her the sword and the face plate, the, it's, it's like a jaw, a jaw plate for, uh, you know, Japanese, uh, assassins, um, that was supposedly owned by her mother. Um, at the very end, we do get to see the Oni Warlord, and I'm not sure if this is another Marvel character. I want to assume it is, because of, um, she looks kind of, like, big and bold. Um, so we do get to see the Oni Warlord. She does have, like, a transfusion thing going, so she is, you know, it, the, the blood thing wasn't a, uh, a jest. But, um, but yeah, basically, it, it, that's, that was it for uh, Demon Days, Mariaka number one. Um... And it's set up perfectly for the issue number two. Um, I will like to point out that I did make a, a a thing about DC, about their advertisements. And look at this. Two different Marvel books and two different back advertisements. How cool is that? And in this book, Marvel gave us this Sinister War, like, fold out little, like, you know, the Sinister Six versus the Savage Six and Extreme Carnage coming in July. You know, they gave it in September, and then it's going to be like a long, drawn out thing. But they gave us this little, like, you know, spread. I love when comics do this. Um, that, to me, is the perfect use of advertisement. You know, they're advertising comics that are coming. You know, for me, this might be a good uh, jump at all point for Spider-Man. Y'all out there, let me know if, if, if y'all think that's a good idea. I've been looking forward to jump back into X-Men, Spider-Man, and Marvel. Um, but, um... I was trying to keep this as short as I can. This is actually my second attempt, and the second, the first attempt was like 30 minutes. Um, if y'all did, like, subscribe, comment. Um, I know I'm rushing at the end, but th those were all my reviews for this week. Let me know if y'all read any of those, what y'all thought about it. If you if you didn't like any of those, and I did, let, let's talk about it. Yeah, any of those uh, Marvel and Independence that I missed. I know there were a bunch, like Planet Size X-Men, Venom 200. And if y'all read that Venom 200 and he's got them chains, let me know if that's a real thing. Um, I don't know, I got another video coming today. I'm gonna do the giveaway today. I'm sorry I'm late, I didn't realize the date. I thought today was the 17th. I, I extremely apologize, but I am gonna do the giveaway today. Um, but I do appreciate everybody, I thank everybody. I already have the giveaways ready to go. I was just waiting on today, Saturday, and I thought today was the 17th, but, the, but um, I will be doing the giveaway. Thank y'all, y'all have a great day. Be love, go read some comics. Talk to someone that loves comics. Even if you don't like comics, just, you know, hug that guy. He needs a hug, too, you know. I don't know. Y'all have a good day. Thank y'all.